Okay, well, here we are, okay. Um, 12 o'clock rock. <laughs> and we're here doing a show that I have wanted to do for a long time, actually, with Lisa Jacobs. And, and the reason is that she is um, a, a common good person trying to help the world, trying to help people who might otherwise have a bad time. And that, that's my understanding of it. And she finds Tom DeGrazia. And Tom DeGrazia is of like mind. Hmm. In fact, he'd been doing it longer. Yeah. <laughs> trying to make people you know, get through divorce process without injuring themselves and the people around them. It's really a simple task, but it has huge effect, whether they realize it or not, on their lives. Yes. Now, the Bar Association, over my, my time watching and actually participating in divorce process back in the, in the 70s, um, fomented <laughs> a lot of bad feeling among people. Lawyers were seen as instruments of, of damage, you know, I want you to hurt my spouse. <laughs> and of course, the lawyer, you know, in those days anyway, would take that as a cultural point in the practice, and he would go out of his way to hurt people. And then the other lawyer would try to hurt people. It was a gladiatorial kind of affair. And in the, in the process, the, the, the clients were hurt. And the judges, well, they encouraged it, honestly, a number of them did. And so the result was damage and destruction. It was really awful to, to watch it. I couldn't stand it. But you guys came up with another solution to that. Pono Divorce and uh, uh, Mediation Center along the same lines. And you've dedicated your, your professional time and thought process and your hearts to it trying to make people do this in a civilized way. Isn't that glorious? Mm, yeah. You must feel good every day. Oh, yeah. So let's see. Um, Lisa is uh, prettier, but Tom is by older. By far. So uh, uh, <laughs> since I know Lisa longer, I'm going to let her start. Good. What are you doing, Lisa? OK, well. Jay, I have my own firm, and it's um, called Better Way Divorce, or also known as Pona Divorce. And so what I do is I help families who are going through that really difficult, um, emotionally-laden process of separating or divorcing, and really trying to do it in focused in on problem-solving and helping manage their emotions, because it is a difficult process, and um, helping them step-by-step -step get through that process, particularly if they have children. Um, because it, uh, having kids, of course, makes things uh, more complicated, more complex, um, in that the spouses will need to continue to work together as co-parents um, with their children. So, you know, we, we, we find ways to help guide them through um, so they can still continue to talk with one another, respect one another, and uh, really care for their children in the best manner, hopefully to reduce the amount of um, negative impact that yeah. it'll have on the family and on the children. You know, but the system, this, this is not intuitively what you would find in the system. What you would find in the system, you know, classically is you represent somebody, you represent that person's interest, you want to win, eh? mm -hmm. um, and they want you to be an instrument of, you know, their, their efforts to win and all that. And, so, right. and, and you know, the, the system isn't, you know, the system is not really built, the system classically is not really classically. built around this. Right. So how do you make yourself a mediation person, uh, a Pono person, finding the Pono way? How do you do that without crossing any, you know, classical legal conflict lines? Right. Well, I mean, there has been a shift, you know, um, here in Hawaii, fortunately, um, we are in the forefront of uh, community mediation across the United States. Uh, Peter Adler. So you're not alone. Them. Yeah, we're not it's alone. It's a big deal all around the country. It, all around the country. Um, and, you know, since we here in Hawaii have started it, we are with the Spirit of Aloha I'm and Ho'oponopono. So, so so that so wonderful that, so, in a place that does that? Yes. <laughs> so, it, so it isn't new, but it does take time for um, the general public to kind of shift their their mindset from you know, we're going to slug it out. I'm going to try to do what I can to, you know, kind of um, get back. But do we have but, some but classical I, divorce lawyers in town who yes, do do that? Yes, yes, there is, is still... Is there instruments? <laughs> yeah, so so depending on what the couple's process, what, what they choose to do, they could do it the classical slug it out way, or they could do it in a gentler way where we're really trying to focus in on needs and values and interest-based um, solutions. So 
uh, you know, I, I see that there is a movement more towards doing it in a more Pono way. But, you know, things don't happen overnight, and people do have uh, other other choices that they can make. Yeah. Um, but just fortunately, because uh, Tom and I and other um, people are more, more focused in on mediation and problem solving um, and helping them um, deal with their emotions in a, more, in a healthier fashion, there are professionals out there. So we're, we're all banding together to let the general public know that there is there are other choices available to them. It's a movement, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. But movements take time. And, yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, and dedication. It, yeah. Of course. Yes. Uh, and talk about time. Tom has been doing this since 1932. <laughs> uh, or before. <laughs> How did you get into this, Tom? Well, um, if you're involved in the adversarial divorce process, you're going to have a lot of blood splattered all over you. And after a while, um, you get tired of cleaning yourself up. <laughs> And you get tired. You, mean, you meaning the lawyer? Yes. Yeah. And okay. uh, and also your tire, your family gets tired of having to deal with a basket case, uh, <laughs> right? Because of the high emotional Tra content trauma <laughs> that's involved. <laughs> you know, we know that divorce is the second most traumatic thing that happens to people. I mean, that's a scientific fact. And the first uh, is death. Right, death of a child. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, for a family, and, and so I determined that, first of all, it's a family that goes through this process, not just the individual sure. that you're counseling. All those relationships. And that indeed you have, a, in my view, in our view, you have an ethical obligation that you owe to your client who is not uh, operating at 100%. Sure. We know that uh, the IQ level and the emotional uh, IQ uh, of individuals going through uh, uh, the divorce process gets lowered significantly. So with it's that, torn between fight and flight. Exactly. Is it just a human condition. Or, or freeze, which is the other okay. the other aspect. <laughs> Do nothing. Bury your head in the sand. Okay. So uh, the thought is that you're taking a family, husband, wife, co-parents, children, uh, and the extended family, and in some facts uh, the community too, because there's tribes that develop the husband's tribe and the wife's tribe. Right. And then there's all the new marriages that are going to occur, the stepchildren and what have you. So complex. So you have, a, a, in our view, the lawyer in that situation has a real ethical obligation to make sure that the clients that he or she is working with are making sound judgment decisions. Okay, And so one becomes involved in helping them transform their lives rather than seeing divorce in the usual cultural context as being a disaster. Well, I, you know, the picture you're painting, both of you, is that this isn't, this isn't really, you know, applying the law so much as it's, uh, it's a combination of things. Mm -hmm. It's applying the law in a, in a pono way, in a humane way. Um, and it's using psychology, it's using a little cultural knowledge, um, it's, it's, it's attitudinal, and you, it's your attitude affecting their attitudes, it's um, a, a social experience, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and um, we see what we do is a very rich, holistic process because um, we bring in um, financial professionals and also mental health professionals to help the couple really just deal with all of the things that are just not pure, divorce is not purely a legal issue, in fact it's much more of an emotional uh, issue. Yeah. I think we were talking maybe 80 yeah. to 90%. 90 percent emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if, if we can help them manage that right. um, and get them into a place where they're really, um, you know, um, really using their reasoning skills rather than just the knee-jerk emotional reactions. Yeah, that's what um, the damage is. Yeah. So, but, you know, you, we talked about this before when you and I spoke mm -hmm. hmm, a couple of years ago, I guess it was. Yeah. And um, one thing I remember is this, this use of experts. Mm -hmm. So, And you, you put them in the same room, put them together? Or do you go one by one? Um, the way I've been doing it is, like, for an initial meeting, we try to encourage the whole team to all meet together so um, people can get to know each other. Um, the the clients, you know, uh, really get to build trust amongst the various professionals. Yeah. Yeah. But because it gets to be costly, because, you know, each uh, professional is, is billing for his or her time, yeah. we don't always have to meet all together. Yeah. But so the it's, concept should be yeah. that there's there's a team. There's a team, definitely. And, and that is more than just that you get get the advice from all these, you know, experts, it's that it's a recognition, a realization 
that there are all kinds of issues involved here. You can't separate the emotional from the financial. Mm -hmm. We right. have to address all of this right, right. together. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, makes for rationality, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a matter of, of helping people move from the limbic, reptilian, ancient brain. There you go. You said, you know, fight, freeze, etc. Uh, to the prefrontal cortex, to the reasoning <laughs> side of the brain. Right. You heard it here on Big Tech. <laughs> but you see this reflected in popular culture now. So the image, the old image, the, the one that you were acquainted with when you were doing divorce law in the 70s, is the Kramer versus Kramer. Okay. Oh, I'll just, never forget that. All, all, out, <laughs> never. all out warfare, right? All out warfare. <coughs> Take there no prisoners. It was pate, remember? Right. <laughs> pate. And then she told him it was the dog. <laughs> and, now, and now you have people like Angela Jolie talking about a conscious uncoupling. Okay, so uh, there is the movement, and that's the movement that Lisa was referring to. Yeah. Sometimes it moves at a glacier pace, but as we see in, in the Antarctic now, the glaciers are moving a lot faster. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Everything's faster right. in the 21st century. The other thing, Jay, to keep in mind is that collaborative law really is turning, especially in the family law area, is turning uh, the role of the lawyer on its head. Yeah. We get paid now for helping people to reach common ground, to reach yeah. an understanding that they can live with that protects the children. Children are first in, in my book, yeah. in our book, yeah. okay? Yeah. That's number one. And our mantra throughout the process is, remember the children, <laughs> remember the children, and remember the children. Because the first thing that flies out the window as much as parents will say, is I the love children. Is the children. Mm -hmm. because they become instruments. Oh, and yeah, divorce, divorce is yeah. such a self-centered activity. It's just a human response. Yeah. Okay. So, but the lawyers now get paid to, to bring people together rather than to keep them apart. But how do you and we get fired. We get fired if anybody <laughs> bolts for the courtroom. We're fired because we can't <laughs> yeah, represent yeah, them yeah. in court. That's right. in the contract. Right, right. Yeah, so we, we put our money where our mouth is that, uh, you know, we're in it too, that we want everybody to arrive at a mutual, mutually acceptable and sustainable agreement. But you and can't so throw them in a room. You know, I remember, I think I told you back when uh, I, had a, I had a client who said, I am going to, I, I, my wife and me are going to get divorced, but we have to work out the property. And we have a friend, and he's a business partner. We both know him for many years. And the three of us are going to get in a room with him. Right. He's and we're going to write it on a yellow right, the, pad. The private judge, right? The private yeah. judge. Yeah. And we trust him. You yeah, know, yeah. It's that simple. And when we're finished, you know, we'll give you the yellow paper, Fidel, and you'll write it up in a property settlement agreement. Uh, and, you know, you can say you represent one side or the other, which I thought I had to do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you about that. Um, and, um, but you'll make it fair. Okay, okay, that worked out, and it, we had a very nice, sociable experience. But, <clears throat> you know, can you throw them in a room? Can you find this fair-minded person in the middle? Are you the fair-minded person? And if you're the fair-minded person, who do you represent exactly? Don't, don't you have to represent one side or the other? It's a cliffhanger, okay? And I really would like to hear how you handle that professionally, personally, sociologically. Don't answer because okay. we're going to take a short break. Okay. We're going to give you time to think. Tick, tick, tick. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Aloha Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Live and we're coming back on that cliffhanger. <laughs> exactly what role do you play? Uh, and you were talking during the break uh, about mediation versus counsel. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, um, you know, 
I, I am both a mediator and a collaborative uh, divorce attorney. So, um, but I can't play two roles at the same time for you know a family situation. So when somebody comes and sees me and is requesting services of mine, I explain the different ways I can help them, and I even explain um, the process of litigation. And I don't do that. So I say that if you want to leave that option open or if you want to litigate them that there's that's something I can't do and then I give a referral. You don't do that. I don't do litigation at all and and that because I want to, to be clear that what I do for people is to help people arrive I support them in a, at arriving at agreements without so, slugging so it, it out. In it's court. not just your preference it's a practical thing you, you really don't want to do litigation because that confuses you and it confuses yeah, and the way the system sees you. Yeah, and it's also just really, for me personally, I wouldn't choose to do that because yeah. it's so stressful and it just goes against my just personal values of uh, yeah. the way I feel I add value to, uh, to clients is uh, help them talk and help them resolve conflict in a more peaceful manner. Oh, you can say that, but in fact, but no, but that's if you're going to spend your time on the planet, you want to spend it in a, in a, in a nice way, yes. helping people, not hurting people. <laughs> right, right. It's not asking too much. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so um, they select their process, and you know, right now Tom and I are working to go. We're both experienced mediators. We're working to grow the collaborative divorce movement, and so it's it's a little bit different in that Tom and I are lawyers. So um, each party has their own independent counsel that they can talk one on one with and find out what their legal rights and obligations are. But we do work as a team, a team with other collaborative lawyers and other professionals. How does that work? So I, I come to you and I say, Lisa, I need your help. And you say, well, I got this Chinese menu here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> column A, column B. You want me to be your lawyer? You want me to be a mediator? I say, I, I want you to be my mediator, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you say, well, you know, you also need to have a, a lawyer, a reasonable lawyer, and I will help you connect. Is this what happens? And, and I help you connect with somebody who can act as your individual counsel? Is that what happens? Correct, right. So if, if um, the person who contacts me and his or her spouse want to hire me, me as a mediator, I make it clear what my role is and that if the mediation were to not work out, then I can't turn around and become somebody's lawyer mm -hmm. because I, um, my job as a mediator is to help both of them and remain impartial and neutral. Okay. Um, in mediation, um, we all, mediators will always encourage um, parties before they sign an agreement. Um, you know, they really ought to have uh, a consulting lawyer take, take a look at the agreement. Hopefully not shred it apart <laughs> because all the effort that the mediators and the parties so have done. So you might refer me to Tom. As, as my personal counsel, look at the mediation agreement, give me advice about that. And right, for a limited time, so maybe not part of the entire process. Just a project, just a look at this one document and advise me about that, is that what it is? Right, right, so it could be for more for a limited scope or a limited purpose, yes. Okay, so now, now we're in the mediation, okay, mm -hmm. we're in the mediation, husband and wife are here together with you, do, do they both have individual counsel in, you know, in that crucible? If they choose to, yeah, so I've done mediations where um, either one or both of them have attorneys that it will attend with them to the mediation sessions. So you Sometimes might, you might recommend that I hire Tom. Uh, right, if they specifically ask for a referral for a consulting attorney. And, and Tom, as a mediator, might recommend that I hire you in a role as counsel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a different, wearing a different hat, but yes. participating in the process. Yes. And you have to be very clear about the hat. Yeah, yeah. There's eth huge ethical implications as to what hat you're wearing and making sure that the, um, if, for instance, if it's mediation, it's not my client, okay, if I'm acting as a mediator, it's a mediation participant. If I'm acting as a collaborative lawyer, then it's my client, okay? Yeah. And my first obligation is to the make sure they understand yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. The key here is education, not only in terms of the process that you're choosing, which is very important to be clear. Is it adversarial? Is it mediation? Or is it in the middle of that pendulum swing, which is collaborative law? Because there are cases, although mediation, in my mind, is the ideal way to go, okay, it doesn't always fit the situation. You have um, imbalances in bargaining ability. You have imbalances in financial ability. Who controls the purse strings in the family, etc. So a lot of times, and it's often the woman that's on the lowest spectrum there, okay? And if you can't, if you're unable as a mediator, as a neutral, as a peacemaker, to balance okay that imbalance then mediation is not the proper fit collaborative law however is right in the middle there because you have your lawyer you have that assurance that that lawyer is there 
looking out for your interests, but at the same time, you bring a mediator sensibility to all of this, a peacemaker sensibility, I should yeah. say, that this should be settled in a way that's the least harmful, particularly to the children. And because you have a number of people involved, including the experts, you can say that the dollar per hour of process is going to be multiples and theoretically expensive. At the end of the day, it's not more expensive. It's way cheaper than having a fight, isn't it? Yeah. Fights are expensive. Yeah, fights get to be very, very expensive. So, yeah, even if they have a full team, typically they will um, save dollars. And then, you know, the value of what they're spending, uh, again, is much more, they're, they're getting so much more value. They're getting karma. Yeah. Karma is everything. Yeah. Karma is how you spend your time on the planet. <laughs> and there's another way of looking at it, and I sometimes explain this, too, which is that, you know, when when you were contemplating marriage, assuming that you could afford it, okay, you spared no expense. You got the best wedding dress, you catered the best affair you could, you invited all your friends and your relatives, the best champagne, all the planning that went into that. Now you're in another life transition here, and although it's totally different on the emotional side, you should put that kind of investment into it because you're looking at the future of your children. You're going to be co-parents forever. And if you can have a, if you can come out of this so you're right. not hating each other and respect what you accomplished as parents yeah. and when you were married, then you've learned something and you bring that to the next relationship, things are going to be a lot better and your co-parenting chores are going to be in, in so much easier and you're not going to go back to court 15 times because you feel you got screwed on the alimony yeah. or you should be getting more child support yeah. or whatever it might be. Just like you wanted to build a good marriage at the beginning, you want to build a good second chapter yeah. or the next chapter exactly. where everybody gets along and you invest for a good return. <clears throat> but let me go to the point of what happens when it doesn't go according to plan and that you try to get people to understand how this works and, and all the benefits of going through a collaborative process, but they don't get it and they go back to that reptilian thing, okay? <laughs> how, how does the lawyer, how does the mediator deal with that? Yeah, it, it, it is a challenge. I mean, when um, we were being trained, I remember our trainer saying that uh, doing collaborative practice is so much harder than litigating because litigating, the rules are clear, you know, everyone's role, everybody being, a, you know, a, a gladiator for the other party, slugging it out to the very end until we settle the day before trial. It's, you know, you just kind of know what you're... God, I hate you, that. <laughs> I want to tell you now. <laughs> but, but, but you know that it's, it's, it's easier to fight than it is to try to yeah. put reason when sometimes it, things yeah. don't really seem to make sense, yeah. you know, when yeah. the parties are just kind of all going nuts. So it, it is a challenge. There, there have been times where I've said, you know, we've reached an impasse. Gosh, you guys are arguing about like three hours of holiday time, and we're going to spend another how much more money on this? So I'd say, you know, <laughs> if we don't, if we, if we don't get beyond impasse by the end of this week, I'm really going to say we really need to bring in a coach and really just help you guys deal with your emotions because it's, it's really not making sense What's a coach? for you. You guys, a, a coach is a mental health professional that okay. will work with the parties to get them emotionally prepared to move forward. One for both of them. Well, they could do one for both of them, or they could each have their own coach. It's like a marriage counselor kind of thing. Sort of, yeah. But they're it, rather they going it all, yeah, <laughs> instead of going through all the past hurts and everything, we really try to focus them in on the present day and on the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's getting them focused to really just be prepared to fit, to really. You guys are so close to the finish line. Let's just get past, the, yeah. you know, get so past. So you've got to be the, the the you got to orchestrate this. You got you got to be the one who sort of supervises it. Yeah, uh, to and kind of manage there must the become process. Time, there must come times when you can't, when they are breaking stride. Uh, when it, yeah. I, I know if you get better at it, that'll happen less. But does it ever happen? Well, um, let's see. Have I had it? Maybe I can be helpful here. Yeah. There's a whole chapter in my book that was published <laughs> last year in 2016 called Light on Peacemaking, how to deal with those difficulties that arise. And they do arise on a fairly regular basis. It's yeah. a very, very good question. Yeah. One answer is the selection of the clients that you're taking. If you have somebody coming in, okay, that is so emotionally strung out, okay, that they're not susceptible to the big thing, which is education, reading material, there's online places, there's a, there's a, there's a website called uptoparents.org uh, where you can go on for no, no, no charge, totally free, and it's interactive. It'll take you through the whole process, emotionally and otherwise, okay? If you do your homework, if you're selecting people, okay, who are open to reason, 
you're going to have emotion. The emotions are going to go off. It's just an emotional process. There's no escape from that. But how you handle it, okay, in the end, if none of that works, if you selected the wrong, the wrong person to represent or the wrong process, and if you tried your best to educate them, my program is called Educated Divorce, and, and the program fails. I can't educate them. Then there's certain things that you can do. One of them is the classic walk away, okay, which is, you guys, we've given it our best shot. I've done everything that I possibly can as a peacemaker here to help you. And we, there's still intransigence on the part of one or both of you. And I understand that. And I understand where it's coming from and how that's hooked to your emotions. However, there's very little more that I can do. I don't feel good about accepting any further uh, remuneration from you because uh, at this point, there's not too much I can do. However, I want to let you know that I'm leaving open that door. When I walk away from here, what? You're going to go back into the legal system? You're going to go pay $500 an hour each to fight it out? Over three three holiday days. Come on now. <laughs> so yeah. we get that. Yeah, I mean, for, fortunately, the success rate in both mediation and collaborative divorce is, is above ninety percent. Really? And, and, right. and there's a, about a two percent reconciliation rate. So we're we're talking about a small percentage of people who maybe didn't self-select the right process for them. But since it's self-selecting, because these both of both mediation and collaborative divorce are. Um, voluntary processes yeah. as long as we do proper screening and give good education and they have con informed consent about the benefits but the small risks that it, we could fall out most of the time they're successful but you know what the feeling i get actually these from the last time we talked till now mm -hmm. is that this is an evolution that this movement is getting more sophisticated people involved are learning more about how to deal with it the people who come into it are they are better to better likely to understand mm -hmm. uh, what their obligations are and what the benefits are um, so that, you know, we have a dynamic going on. This is, it's, this is moving ahead into the community. More people are involved. It is becoming, um, you know, more of a contribution that you guys make to the whole process, a, civil, a, civil, a civilization, a civilizing mm -hmm. of the process. But I want to offer you both the opportunity to talk to the public. The public may not know what we're talking about. I hope they pick up some of this anyway. But can you tell them what you'd like them to take away from this discussion? There's camera one, the red light. Go for it. Okay. Did you want to go first, Tom? Go ahead. No. no. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I, you risk a manologue. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we wanted to um, let the public know that there are uh, different ways that they can work through conflict. And uh, collaborative law is, is one way where um, you have the independent advice of your own lawyer, but you also have a team of, of professionals out there to help you, including um, the other party who right now you're presently not in full agreement with. Um, you, the other party can have a collaborative lawyer too, and we work as a team and we work together and we, we really focus in on helping the two of you problem solve and come up with solutions that are sustainable. Um, collaborative law is seems to be the most popular in working with family law conflicts or divorces, but um, the possibility of applying it to other types of conflicts is, is out there and available. Um, I've started doing uh, elder law uh, mediation. So, you know, and there, of course, when you've got an, uh, um, an aging adult and adults, uh, children, siblings who may not be in full agreement about what to do with their aging parents. There's a lot of emotions involved. There's money issues. There's caretaking issues. Uh, so I see collaborative practice also evolving into those type of yeah. areas that aren't. Uh, You're right. Yeah, in, the, in the human aren't. condition, this means controversies in general yes. can, can be subject to and improved by collaborative law. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree with that, Tom? Uh, you got one minute. Absolutely. My message real quick is something I mentioned before. Uh, divorce does not have to be a financial and emotional disaster, okay? It can be transformative if it's handled well in a conscious manner. If you're retaining peacemakers, uh, people who want to help you and your family get through a very, very difficult time in your life. So uh, finding the right process, if you're considering a divorce or a legal separation, is extremely important. And speaking to a professional, that can help you uh, determine which process is appropriate for you is extremely important. You know, you guys, you know, FinTech is into the common good. 
our management, our staff, all the people around, all our volunteers, we're into the common good, and you are perfect for us. We love you. We love the contribution. <laughs> and we love you. Yeah, all right, yeah. there it is. And on that.